Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, SAP with IK. Hope you're all doing good. So today in this video, we'll discuss on the batch derivation process and also the prerequisites, the configuration, and why do we actually need the batch derivation process in the pharmaceutical industry. So let's get started. So let's first try to understand uh, what is a batch derivation and how does it actually help uh, in the typical pharma industry. So the blue boxes that you see here are basically the batch characteristics uh, of the raw material or the active pharma ingredient or uh, the API. And the green circle here is basically the batch of the finished product. So now while uh, manufacturing a finished product, you always want to copy the characteristics of a particular batch from the API uh, material itself, right? So let's say we are using the uh, raw material uh, RM1 and we are using the batch uh, B1. So there are a few characteristics in the batch B1, let's say the uh, date of manufacturing and the date of expiry or maybe uh, the SA value or the potency of that particular batch so on. So these characteristics should not be manually entered by any user in the system but it should automatically be copied uh, into the finished product batch that we are manufacturing in the process order. So in the batch derivation process we basically uh, try to copy the characteristics of the API material into the finished product batch. So the batch derivation can actually be uh, executed at the time of a usage decision or at the time of the GR of the process order or maybe while releasing the process order itself, right? So once we activate the batch derivation, then the characteristics of the material that we have selected in the configuration or may maybe the master data, so that gets updated into the finished product batch uh, automatically. So here we are actually reducing the user in intervention and or we are also cutting off the entire process of uh, manual updates of the batch characteristics uh, into the finished product. So let's have a look at the prerequisites. So the first one is basically that the materials uh, should be batch managed and they should be classified uh, in the class 023 which is basically for the batches. And then the material that we are actually manufacturing, so let it be a semi-finished or it can be a finished product so it should always have a, a bill of material. So without bill of material, we cannot actually uh, execute the batch derivation process. And after that, the third uh, criteria is basically to create the derivation events for the sender and the receiver materials. So here we will be uh, talking about the sender and the re receiver throughout the process. So the sender is nothing but the material which actually sends its characteristics into the receiver material or the receiver batch. So the, re the receiver is always the material that we are actually trying to manufacture in the process order. So in this example, let's, uh, let's say that the sender is an API or a raw material and whereas the receive is a finished product or maybe a semi-finished product. So in order to uh, create the derivation events uh, for the combination of the sender and receiver, we basically use the transaction OCHA and then we have to create the derivation strategies for the sender and the receiver. So the transaction to create the uh, derivation strategy for the sender is DVS1. So the S basically stands for sender. And similarly for the receiver, it is DVR1. So R stands for receiver. So let's jump into SAP and uh, take a look at the entire process. So here we are in SAP. So uh, let me uh, show you the bill of material that uh, we will be using today in this scenario. So I'm going to use the material. Oops. So it's uh, F-101 and the plant is uh, 3000 with the bomb usage 1. So here this is my finished product and this is my raw material. So let's assume that this uh, is an API or an active pharma ingredient. And I would like to copy the characteristics of this particular batch into the uh, batch of this finished product. So let me uh, open a new screen. And let's take a look at the configurations. 
in the OCHA. So the OCHA, it directly uh, navigates you to the batch management uh, configuration. So under this, you see a node for the derivation of batch data. So just open the node and here you have to activate the batch derivation events and then click on define derivation events. So if I click on the derivation events here, you can see the uh, various conditions uh, when the batch uh, derivation should actually trigger. So the first one is basically the usage decision and then we have the release of the process or the production order and the third is the batch record and then we have the goods receipt so on. So there are multiple uh, events that you can see here uh, where we can actually perform the batch derivation process. So here uh, I would like to derive the batch characteristics at the time of the release of the process order and this is where I have actually assigned my receiver strategy and also the sender strategies. So here these strategies are basically created in the transaction DVS1. So since I have already created, I am going to use the DVS2. So as you can see that DVS2 is basically for the sender uh, material. So here my strategy is uh, BDS1. This is my strategy type. And here in the key combination, you can actually choose should the combination be based on the receiving material and the sending material or just based on the sender material. So I don't want to always create uh, the receiving material and the sending material but I would like to always maintain my sending material. So no matter in which bill of material the sender material is uh, defined so automatically the derivation event will be triggered wherever the sender material is part of the bill of material. So let me just select this reader button and then continue. So here I just need to enter my sender material. So this is my raw material here and then execute. So I can see the sender material. So if you have multiple materials, you can keep on adding here. And I'm going to go into the details of this. So here we have to actually uh, create the characteristics which are to be copied or sent from the sender material into the receiver material. So here I've actually entered two fields like the batch restricted or not and also the shelf life expiry date. So these two are my fields basically. So I have created them as a field and then I have updated for this particular material. And if you have any custom fields or any uh, custom uh, characteristics, so those also can be updated in this transaction. So now uh, the strategy group for the sender material has been updated. So let's have a look at the receiver material. So, so the transaction for that is uh, DVR1. So since I have created, I'm going to use DVR2 transaction and here my strategy type is going to be BDR1 and here you have the key combination of the as the material number and the material type. So if you have multiple materials so let's say uh, every time you create a finished product you always want to have this particular strategy then you just go by the material type or if you need this batch derivation only for a few key products so then it's better to go by the material number. So here I have used the material number and I just need to type in the receiver material uh, which is my finished product and then execute. Go into the details of the finished product and these are the characteristics which should be updated from the sending material or the sender. right? So please make sure that you always have the same characteristics updated in both the sender material and the receiver material. So if there is a mismatch, then the characteristic value will not be copied into this particular uh, derivation process. So now the master data and also the configuration has been uh, completed. So let's go and uh, create a process order for this. So I'm going to use the transaction COR1. And here is my order type. And I'm uh, entering the quantity as 100 and the current date. So if I go into the materials, I see my raw material here uh, with the requirement quantity and now I'm going to update the batch number uh, which will be consumed into the manufacturing process. So uh, before this I would like to show you the batch characteristics of this particular batch. 
batch underscore BD. So for that, I'm going to the transaction MMBE for the raw material. And here you can see the batch. I just will open the batch classification. And here you can see that the shelf life expiry date is 1 1 2022 and the date of manufacture is 1 1 2021 and the batch status is not re restricted. So I'm going to create this process order now and save it. So here is my process order 2082 the last four. So I'm going into the change mode and you can see that the batch has been created. But if I go into the details of this batch, you can see that the date of manufacture, the shelf life expiry. Uh, so these fields are not basically updated. But when I release the uh, process order, I click on the release flag. Okay, it says that the release has been rejected. The reason is that, uh, let me look at the reason. Okay, we have sufficient materials in place. Okay, let me go into the logs of uh, release. And what does it say? Oops. So this process order has uh, the operation classification, which is the reason it is not uh, allowing me to release the order without the cl uh, classification. So if you need more details on this classification process uh, for the operations, so you can check out my uh, other videos. So I'm going to select the operation and then do the classification. So in the classification, you can see that my default uh, work center or the resource is reactor. But whereas while releasing the order, I need to uh, select the appropriate uh, resource or the work center where the actual operation is going to take place. So now I'm going to choose the reactor three, choose and now the work center has been updated here on the resource and now I'll try to release it. So now you can see that we see this particular pop-up screen which basically uh, comes up based on the, conf the configuration that we have defined in the OCHA transaction. So let me uh, go to that. OCHA. So here if I go into the defined derivation events so you can see that under this particular uh, strategy or the procedure, you can see that the window is uh, mentioned to be as always display. So there are multiple options like if you do not want to display, if there are no errors, then you can choose display when errors and uh, you can also hide it uh, when it is okay. And if you do not want to see anything, you always uh, can hide it by using this option. So for now, based on the existing configuration, it has been maintained as always display. So that's the reason we see this message, uh, this pop-up screen. And here you can see uh, three categories, error message, warning message, and information message. So right now we have uh, no messages updated here. I mean, it's always zero. It means that there are no errors or warnings or any kind of information messages during the derivation process. And you also can go into the details of this. Just click on the details icon and here you can see the recipient batch and the sender batch. So the batch uh, 758 of the finished product is actually receiving the date of manufacture and the shelf life expiry date from the sender batch, which is batch underscore BD. So these characteristics ha have been derived into the finished product. So I'm going to close this window and then click on release. So now the, uh, the release has been carried out and I'm going to save the order. So the order has been saved. Go back to the order. Go into the details of the batch. So now you can see that the date of manufacture and the shelf life expiry date has been updated based on the batch derivation process. That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also click on the bell icon to receive updates. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye -bye.